Hello. Welcome. Uh, we're just going to get started in one second. Uh, this is the last of the Zoom um, recorded sessions for the new female coaches and consultants. Just bear with me one second. Got this. Okay. Hello, my name is Kua Kant and I am the head of Chile of Brooklyn Magic. Uh, and welcome to the last of the Zoom recorded for new female coaches and consultants. Um, so let us get started on the topic. The topic today is managing failure and your expectations. So I'm just going to take you through the agenda for today uh, and then we will um, take it away. So the topics we will be exploring in this recorded session are what are my go-to habits on failure? Um, what will I do to change my failure routine? So we've talked about uh, failure and we're about failure stories um, and now we're just going to uh, revisit that again um, from a slightly different perspective at an angle. And then we're going to talk about expectations. We talked a little bit about um, patience. Uh, and so this is, I guess, uh, a sister topic uh, to that. So what is my routine for managing my expectations? What stories do I tell myself about my expectations? And how can I change my expectations stories? Why you must feed your mind with the sorts that help you and why you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because as we all know, um, nothing um, grows from our comfort zone. You've got to get a bit uncomfortable um, to really um, reach further, aim higher um, and to be of ourselves. And then finally, affirmations for the road ahead. So let's get started. So what are my go-to habits on failure? So the first thing uh, you'll know if you've watched any of these um, sessions, uh, I'm always saying awareness gives you choice and freedom. I mean, that really is true. So with that in mind, if you think about the last time you failed, you know, how did you feel? Um, and what did you do? You know, and do you think um, currently the way that you um, your, your, your habits on failure are helpful? or are they more harmful? And we're gonna think about how to make them uh, more helpful as we, we go through this session. So what process did you go through to analyze and assess what went well and what could, what could be improved? So as much as failure stings, you know, um, that is um, a fact, but you know, you could get to a stage where it doesn't sting and you perhaps relish it. Um, there are people that have that uh, attitude and mindset um, and it's a place that you could get to, that's something you so wish, but you know, otherwise I believe um, really getting to a place where you are analytical about failure um, and seeing it as, as a process to get to success, but also um, something that it can be utilized. I mean, isn't just, you know, about negative feelings. Obviously we have to feel how we feel, but we need to, um, you know, move past and getting stuck in those um, negative feelings. So, you know, what did you, um, assess that went well um, and what could be improved and then thirdly how long do you spend in that that sting phrase I was just talking about and was it helpful for you so I'm um, here I really urge you to think about you know if you have quite a long um, sting phase um, think about how you can um, reduce that and um, so that you're um, less um, stuck in those negative um, emotions and really um, you know feeling them because we need to feel our feelings but what are you doing to um, move forward, to progress, um, and to um, you know spring forward um, from those things? And there are a lot of helpful things that you can do. Um, you know anything from breathe, breathing techniques, 
um, exercising, journaling, and various things, but we need to um, be conscious um, and mindful that we need to reduce that sting phase. So what will I do to change my daily routine? So the first thing is, what are you going to do to change your relationship with failure? And as I said before, we really need to be um, aware and conscious, but we've got to think about what are you going to actually do? So the next question is, what is one thing that you're going to change um, in your failure routine to make it helpful to you? So, you know, we need to be aware of our stories. We need to be uh, aware of our habits. I'm um, going to go to activities. Um, and once we have got that picture, we need to think about not just think about, think and then do. Um, what's one thing you're going to do to, to change um, that cycle and to make it a more helpful process for you? And then finally, I guess I keep saying, um, awareness gives you choice and freedom. So um, what are you going to do to succeed at failure? I know this might sound like a sort of, um, you know, ironic and a bit cheesy phrase, but you really can succeed at failure. Um, and that really is about understanding your failure stories, beliefs, habits and behaviours um, and working and doing the work to, um, you know, reframe them um, consciously. Um, and also, um, you know, using um, things from your mindset toolkit to help you to really be um, conscious of your thoughts and also to help you to, um, you know, use um, powerful tools um, such as affirmations and um, breathing, breathing techniques, um, meditation and mindfulness and other things that can help you to succeed at failure and make um, failure be um, a less, um, you know, um, painful process um, and one where, um, I'm not going to say it's so relish, but um, one where you at least, um, you know, have a process at, that you go through, um, which allows you to feel your feelings, but obviously, um, you know, go through a process to get to the um, analytical part um, and the part where you acknowledge um, both what went well and what could be improved. Um, and then seeing that as a useful a bit of data to, to actually move you forward. Um, and that really is where it's at. So what's in my mindset um, toolkit that can help me to reframe uh, failure? Just as I was just saying before, we're just, just going to look at some of the um, things that you could have in your, in your toolkit. So we've, we've all got um, a toolkit that helps us to be um, solutions focused and positive. Um, and if you haven't, then here are some suggestions that you may like to undertake. So uh, what's in your toolkit? So here are a couple of things which I recommend would be helpful of telling your, your toolkit. So affirmations, you know, I am statements, um, breathing techniques. So breathing techniques are really helpful in um, helping us to um, get less hijacked from powerful emotions and um, mindfulness obviously helps us to be more focused and journaling also helps us uh, to focus and to um, you know understand our feelings and thoughts and helps us to reframe um, some of those things that are not um, helping us. Thirdly, have you ever employed any of the above tools with your recovery from failure? Because it might be that you're using these tools uh, in other instances and in other parts um, of your life but you never applied it to failure but Applying it to failure is actually really helpful. So perhaps you can um, now think about, you know, is it one thing that you're going to change? Perhaps it could be applying one of these, um, you know, tools to help you to bounce back. So what is my routine for managing my expectations? So expectations are both a wonderful thing, but also they're tricky to manage. Um, and the first, we also have to start with awareness. You know, are you aware of your go-to Thoughts, feelings, actions or inactions are in relation to your expectations. Uh, and finally, you have the choice as to what pattern of behaviours and choices you choose to, you choose to make uh, in this domain. So again, it's about making the choices that serve and help you uh, to be forward, but also to understand where we are now and where we want to be um, and what actions we're going to take to, to get there. So, um, Let's dig in a bit deeper about what do um, your expectations stories tell you uh, about yourself. So what sort of stories uh, do you tend to hear about your ex ex expectations? Um, and here are a couple of examples. So I don't expect this to work out. I don't believe that I have what it takes. My progress to date isn't in line with my expectations, um, so I must be doing it wrong. And definitely I have uh, felt that one, um, but we mustn't get misled by some of the thoughts that we had, that, that we have even, um, and we must be um, conscious um, and aware 
of these sorts i um, mean, in order for us to reframe um and to also um you know set ourselves different expectations um, and beliefs that allow us to um, manage our expectations more successfully and with more patience so uh, write down and reflect on what does having patience with my expectations mean for me so it's really um, a case of thinking about you know we all have um, fantastic uh, expectations but what does um, having patience in respect to those expectations mean to you because once you think about that and we think about anchoring about around your why, your mission, and your, your beliefs and your values, and that will really help you to understand why it's so important to be patient with your expectations. And finally, um, what expectation story is harming me? Um, and what do I need to stop doing um, to myself? Yes, this one is always a tough one, but you know, we've got to get super honest um, with ourselves um, and allow ourselves to, um, you know, um, use the five whys technique or any other technique that you, that you choose to help you to really get honest with some of these um, perhaps uncomfortable truths. But then once we are there, um, we need to um, understand that they don't help us. So we need to stop them uh, and we need to replace them with something else so that we are um, you know, creating new um, patterns uh, and neurons uh, in the brain. So um, how can I change my expectations stories? And as I said before, I'm gonna repeat again, the stories we tell ourselves are powerful. So tell yourself a story that, that serves your greatest good, your greatest interest. And yes, your stories do definitely matter. So as I keep saying, awareness gives you choice and freedom. The first thing to do is to ask yourself, you know, what would be um, a more health ex expectations story to tell myself, you know, what would help me to understand why I need to employ that patience? Um, ask yourself, what have you um, accepted, which in the past, which you're no longer willing to accept um, anymore? Um, and why, crucially, why are you not willing to accept that thing anymore? Because we need to anchor our, our change in behaviours um, in a real con concrete reason to help us to be committed to the, the path of trans transformation and change. And, you know, finally, write down a new expectation story, you know, and give your expectations um, a different meaning anchored in your why, as I said before, your beliefs, the impact that you want to have in the world um, and the, the life that you desire to live. So why must you feed your mind with the thoughts that help you? Because it is in your best interest um, and it will help you to move forward, to be solutions focused um, and to really help you um, to live your best life. So you are your most important asset. So it's in your interest to think the thoughts to help you, you know, think that you're a winner, think that you're unstoppable um, and really keep um, repeating those thoughts because repetition is to mastery. But repetition, 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 as boring as that sounds, um, really does help you to um, change those um, pathways in the brain and helps you to think differently. Um, and the thing I have to say is, is about patience is um, when we are doing this work around affirmations or I'm repeating things that we are don't naturally um, believe in the first instance, it takes time. And sometimes the shifts initially are imperceptible, but actually um, with that repetition, they do um, happen, so have patience and hang in there, but also, um, you know, speak to friends and colleagues and, and relatives um, and, you know, ask them if they notice anything different, because it may be that you're not um, noticing anything because they're, they're small, subtle shifts, but the people around you, they will definitely notice. Um, feelings can be misleading, but thoughts of gratitude are always beneficial. Yep, absolutely. So um, feelings and emotions have such can take such a powerful hold, hold of us um, and they can be misleading. So it's really important that we find ways to um, anchor ourselves um, in the more positive feelings. I'm not saying we, don't, we um, deny negative feelings. Negative feelings do have a place and they do um, help us to do certain things. But um, in the main, we need to be, um, you know, positive and solutions focused. Um, and having feelings of gratitude always helps us to see the bigger picture um, and why we need to, um, you know, move forward in certain ways. Um, and why what we actually have at the moment um, is great and good um, and a place that we can build upon. So um, it costs you nothing. So it costs you to um, feed your um, mind the thoughts that that don't help you it does cost you you know it costs you a lack of progress um it costs you um you filling your hopes dreams and wishes it, it costs you believing in yourself and it costs um the progress that you make so it's way more helpful 
um, to choose um, the thoughts that serve you or, or the thoughts that help you um, because that is of your greatest good and of your greatest benefit. So, um, you know, as much as it seems that it's easier to think of those um, negative thoughts, they, there's a real cost um, in your progress, um, in the lives that you want to leave, in you fulfilling your mission in the world, I mean, in you fulfilling your impact, um, and you really being able to um, live your best life. So I think the best way um, is to, to choose um, the ways that are more solutions focused, um, that are more helpful to you, um, and that really uh, aid you to, um, you know, have that analytic, uh, analytical mindset um, that allows you um, to um, use the testing mindset as we talked about in a previous session. So uh, why do you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable? Yes, um, as much as, you know, everyone loves their comfort zone, that's not where the magic happens. We all know this. Um, so growth is not come from your comfort zone, obviously. Um, you know, all the things that you desire um, the most will require you to be your best self. Um, and for you to do that, you're going to need to get uncomfortable and you're going to need to be doing things that you've not done before, ladies. You know, the things that you've not done before are the things that are going to um, give you that, that growth, that magic, that um, real um, momentum and push forward to where it is that you want to be. Um, and as I say, you know, doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results um, does not lead to different results, ladies, as much as I sometimes like to believe that. That is not the case and um, we've got to get down with that the fact that um that is not true so um yes really um focus on um getting comfortable with that discomfort in order to get that growth um, and finally commitment means being willing to face your discomfort um, and being solutions focused you know because as I talked about in the previous um session are you interested or are you committed commitment really is about that willingness to face that discomfort, that willingness to do it when it's hard, that willingness to, you know, um, get over your excuses, that willingness to um, to rest and not quit, um, and that willingness to um, really um, be super um, focused and committed on doing what it takes, whether that's asking for help, you know, whether that's, um, you know, going on a different um, tack or a different way, but it essentially is, um, you know, giving everything um, that you have, um, and trying 110 ways um, until you eventually um, get to where you are going. So I am going to uh, end with some affirmations for um, the road ahead. And as I always say, choose some affirmations that serve you. And I really think the affirmations are super powerful. So whether it's you write them down, whether you recite them, read them, listen to them in your own voice, um, or voicing it, them and playing them back. There's just so many ways to enjoy affirmations. So I'm just going to share with you um, a couple um, and encourage you to create your own. So I'm open to learning and to developing a testing mindset. I embrace failure as part of my journey to success. I'm open to learning and to developing a testing mindset. I embrace failure as part of my journey to success. I am a magnificent being. Yes, yes, you are. I am a magnificent being. Yes, yes, you are. And now uh, I want you to try. So I'm just going to say, I am, and then pause. We'll do it maybe three times. Um, just so that you can, um, you know, join in. I am. I am. I am. Absolutely, fill in the blank. Out of what you are. So you are, of course, invited to join the creator cohort for the senior female professional to coach or consultant. And guess what, ladies? We're starting on the 17th of May, and that is Tuesday next week. So um, now is the time to step up with any questions that you may have about the program um, and to you know, talk about being solutions focused um, and find out what opportunities that there are to be involved uh, in the program. So the program will only be delivered um, once in this mode. This is the creator cohort. So once I have um, completed this cohort, um, it will be tested. 
um, and therefore uh, the investment will be higher um, and there'll be um, slightly uh, less of me uh, being available um, on the course. So if you really uh, want to experience um, my coaching, then now is the time to step up because the exchange here um, is um, a different investment price, but also um, the feedback that you're going to provide that's going to help me. I and mean, actually at, at the end of this program, what I want to do is for you to practice your visit Visibility, visibility muscle and i'll be inviting you to actually um do a linkedin um, live with me just to talk about um you know what you're doing at the moment and where you're sort of headed i'm um, in a way that obviously um serves where you are right now in your career journey um and also to talk about your experience of um you know the coaching uh, program so um you know this opportunity gives you uh, someone who's energetic, who has been where you are, um, tools for implementation and action, you know, really a focus on habits um, and, you know, cheerleading, um, but not only just cheerleading, cheerleading, it's that thing about um, coming from a holistic point of view. So that's about um, your mindset, about your physical body, um, and also about looking after our body. Um, and that's where we're going to start because, um, only if we are um, mindful of how we look after ourselves um, as women, um, we will be most successful um, in whatever endeavor we choose, um, whether it's coaching or consulting. So, um, you know, there's gonna be access to resources and training um, modules, um, there's gonna be coaching sessions. So the schedule, um, which I have, please do reach out if you're interested in knowing that, it's basically a Tuesday and a Thursday on the main with a few odd um, dates that are not following that pattern and then we're coaching a session on the Tuesday and on Thursday is implementation so that means Q&A but also really um, going through um, the exercises that you have been asked to do but it's really focusing on those habits um, and that um, accountability in the group so sharing um, your successes sharing your lessons and sharing your, your growth. So um, yeah, what's super um, valuable about this is it's a group um, program. So we're all going to be um, learning from each other. Um, and it's a fantastic um, set of ladies who've already um, said yes. So please do reach out if this is something that you have been um, wanting to step forward to, but you're just not sure. And now is the time. So we're definitely gonna be supporting you with wins, um, cheering, um, lessons and growth. So the affirmation uh, to end today's session is, I am resilient, I am solutions focused, and I am committed to making my transition to, my transition, uh, to become a coach or a consultant. So I am resilient, I am solutions focused, and I am committed to making my transition to become a coach or consultant. And one more time, I am resilient, I am solutions focused, and I am committed to making my transition to become a coach or a consultant. So that is all I have um, for you in this final uh, session. I would love to get your feedback. So please do uh, reach out um, on LinkedIn or by email. Um, that would be superb. Um, you know, it'd be great for me to understand um, which of these sessions really um, resonated and helped you um, and further topics for um, a new um, series. Um, so the series is going to be on pause uh, for now whilst I start the program um, next week on Tuesday um, we'll, and we'll probably be back in the um, the autumn. Uh, so for now, please do enjoy what's on YouTube um, and if you're on the mailing list, also please do um, use the mailing list exclusive um, sessions to um, reflect um, and help you with your journey. Um, and just to find the end, um, be bold, be brave, be marvellous, back yourself, and of course, be your number one cheerleader. All right, take care and goodbye.